IMAX 3D. The best and most wonderful Dolby Surround. Insightful comments about technology you've ever thought you've heard until now or forever. Oh, I forgot to increase the bit rate. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't you, do it now. You can't write that kind of shit. It was the best until <laughs> you realize it sucks. Oh, except we're streaming it to <laughs> completely <laughs> wrong settings and it looks like horrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's too late. It's totally too late now, too. There's Our nothing, will is good, people. Nothing. Don't judge we'll, us too harshly. We'll fix it next week. Correct streaming settings will come next this week. Is really horrible. All right. So, um, hey, so hey, we're everyone. Just with it? <laughs> I have to cut both streams and restart uh, if we're gonna. We're already late. You're right. We're already, it's at 7.30 already. You can just watch it at 30 FPS, the measly yeah, 30 it's, FPS. It's, no, it's still 60 FPS. But you're the, you're getting 60 frames per oh, second. Oh, they can't, they can't choose? You're just getting half of the amount of data in each frame <laughs> well, yeah. that you would have gotten otherwise. But there's no 30 FPS, like... I don't think you can, they, you can't select, select that between, on Twitch. Okay, it doesn't, on like, YouTube, automatically... I don't think you can do that on YouTube either, so... Okay. Yeah. Um... Hey everyone, though, Sorry. welcome welcome to Awesome Hardware, a live show about technology. How bad does it look? Probably the best technology show, even though <laughs> we're not good at technology. Uh, we do it every Tuesday evening, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. This is episode number 112, and we actually already have been streaming for well over an hour. Uh, the first half of episode 112 is on Kyle's channel, which is called uh, Bitwit. <laughs> that was an awesome. Did you bring awesome your note cards? cards? <laughs> yes. I have note cards. We're fine. Them. We're fine. <laughs> the first half was on Kyle's channel, which is Bitwit. Link is in the description. Yeah, that was the sober half. So click on that if you're interested. Uh, also, we do drink uh, a few drinks of uh, the beer and alcohol-enabled variety here on the show. Why is there still... Is I'm pouring it very pour? slowly so that it's the perfect amount of head. We drink a few beers. Uh, I'm just giving you really good. We head may right now. curse and use foul language, so bear that in mind if you are uh, if you're young or Ass. easily offended. <laughs> Sorry about that. And yes, what I was supposed to do before we started streaming was fix the bit rate because the bit rate on the, the streaming software we use XSplit is still set to the default, which is ideally set up for like a 1080 30 stream. <clears throat> We're streaming at 60 frames per second because my camera is capturing at 60 frames per second. Fancy new capture system with a 6950X in it. Wait. Yeah, it continues. Can we drop... It continues? Oh, it continues. Can't just let the little green man go. Every time we take a drink, we have to take the little green man off the drink before we drink. Then two sips for me because I forgot. And then put him back on. All right. <clears throat> this show's already all over the place, so I don't blame any of you guys if, if, who have uh, stopped watching. We're going to talk about Ethereum mining today. Uh, because it sucks now. <laughs> Depending on, on who you are and how reactive you are. They, like, to, what, to dropped, fluctu like, tanked in price or something? Fluctuations in the marketplace. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. I'm teasing. Oh, you're teasing. Oh, you're just teasing. Uh, oh, gonna do, talk, your, do your tease. We're going to talk a little bit about net neutrality, because there's a day of action going on tomorrow, and we'll be explaining that a little bit to you and talking about some of the uh, variables there. Not seriously, though. Please don't. Please don't assume this is some sort of a reference. serious show. Or serious Don't, show. Do not assume that we take not at all. seriously. And then uh, we'll be talking about Intel because Intel continues to suck recently. Uh, there's no other way to describe it, really. But um, suck in a bad way. Yeah, let's dive into our first segment, though. Uh, continuing from the first half, which is the continuation of tech news. But actually, no, never mind. Never mind about that. First off, if you want to buy stuff at our stores. <laughs> Check that out. PulseHardware.net. PulseHardware.net is my store. Shirts, mugs, and pint glasses. All good stuff. Buy it during the show. We'll give you a shout out at the end of the show. Same with Kyle's store, uh, which is bitwit.tech slash store. He also has shirts, mugs, pint glasses. All good stuff. <sighs> Buy. <sighs> Buy things. All right. Back to news. First article is, is from Tweaktown. This yeah. one was written by none other than our good friend Anthony over at Tweaktown. Hey, Anthony! Anthony! Friend of the show. Johnson to you, Anthony. Uh, Ethereum mining is dead. We've been talking about Ethereum mining a lot in the past, uh, I don't know, month or so since graphics card prices have gone through the roof. Uh, it's been very difficult to buy a GPU, especially if you're looking at anything in the mid-range, because people have been using them for cryptocurrency mining, most uh, significantly Ethereum mining, um, because it's a good way to make some money. 
It was. Buy a graphics card for 250 bucks. Yeah. spend a couple months mining with it, pay off your graphics card's price, and then all the money you get from mining after that profit. is profit. Be a profit. Uh, Anthony, house. Anthony's done a lot of mining. I know he's got a, he's got a bit of a farm going. Um, yeah. He shared some pictures of it uh, via Tweaktown articles as well as mm-hmm. on Facebook and, and whatnot. Um, however, there's a, a pretty big fluctuation in the market just in the past 24 hours and you can tell this is serious because it's a Tweaktown article and there's multiple pages. <laughs> Look at this. Wait, why am I want They never do multiple pages I unless can't say click serious. On all right, apparently I can't click on the drop down, but there's multiple pages. It's a four page article. And uh, yeah, sorry. In the last 72 hours, the difficulty of mining Ethereum has increased pretty significantly. Uh, there's some areas that? highlighted here. This is the increase in difficulty of mining Ethereum because it gets more difficult to mine the more people mine it. Ah. Um, the price, as a result, has dropped to a two month low. And what we're specifically wow. talking about here is the DAG increase. So this dag. is this is time time in the bottom and the dag increases over here on the right and dag increases the level of difficulty that it uh, uh, that it takes to mine Ethereum. Hold hmm. on, I'm going to close this. Really What's quickly. dag stand for? Um, difficulty. Thank you for cueing me, Kyle. Dag You're stands welcome. for directed ah. acyclic graph. Acyclic. In Ethereum, a dag is created every epoch, 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 epoch. every epoch. Uh, uses a co- combination of algorithms. The algorithms that kind of make the make up the basis of Ethereum, um, and then a new DAG comes out. And the bigger the DAG is, from my understanding, the more of the GPU memory it uses up. So the more difficult it makes it for uh, for the GPUs to mine. And please bear in mind that I haven't done much mining myself. Most of what I'm talking about here is from reading articles and everything like that. So. If you guys are hardcore miners and you feel like what we're saying is not exactly accurate, I'm sorry. <laughs> but there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> anyway, um, the DAG has increased in waves throughout the first week of July. Uh, and, then there, and then there was a massive mountain-like increase on July 11th. You can see the chart sort of ramps up right here um, to 1.2T. And I don't know what 1.2T, I have no idea what 1.2T means. Uh, that's not terabytes, I don't think. But I believe it is the size Transfers. of the DAG. I don't know. <laughs> Beats this is, me. This is why I've prefaced this with, by the way, we might have no idea what we're talking about. Also, we've been tricking. <laughs> that makes everything okay. So, Anthony, because he's super into this, uh, was following this very closely in the past 24 hours. Followed it as it bottomed out to the lowest price of $183.39. And actually, I have the... Uh, Current chart right right here on CoinDesk, and this is this is this is up to date to the minute right now. So uh, here is where it started to drop off. So this is the 11th of July. You'll notice it actually hit a pretty low point here, 196.97. There was a massive increase in the difficulty of mining, and then it started to just fall off really, really, really significantly here mm-hmm. over the past day. Bottomed out at about 183.39, but then it re it it bumped back up right here. So. Remember that it jumped back up right here as you read Anthony's article because it makes it kind of funny. Um, price All drops below place. 180 dollars US US. Uh, on page four, he points out that all cryptocurrencies are down, not just oh, I'm Ethereum. A, I'm sorry, I'm getting a call from our good friend and moderator Nick. Oh, our really? cell processing. What's up, dude? Why? Wow, what's going on? Oh, is my Oh, your video's unlisted. You're right, it is. Thank you, Nick. Got it. Thank you very much, Sal. <laughs> Thank you, Sal. You're, the You're best right, that, that probably back. makes it more challenging for people to watch. It's right here. Sal's the best! He's the best, the best man I've right. ever known. Sorry, I suck. It's public now. Let's build, let's build him another computer. Like, right now. Right now? Just build him another computer. Fuck just it. Just another one? Just screw just, the rest of the show? Have it build him more computers than he has use for. Okay. Oh, and then even... Even... <laughs> what? Even my... Even 2.0, my brother-in-law, who's an avid watcher of our show, just texted me now. Paul isn't streaming <laughs> to YouTube right now, just FYI. So, yeah. 
I am streaming to YouTube. It was just Thank private you, instead of public. Yeah, you were. But now it's been updated. Now, now so, the world knows. So now more people should be able to watch. So, so <laughs> thank you, Cell. I've done that many times. Thank you, Cell. Easy. And yeah, yeah, this is again another episode where we're relying a lot on on blaming the fact that we've been drinking. <laughs> and I'm gonna have some more. Yep. Hey, mm -hmm. green man for the win. That's right. So that means the only people who have been really watching have been the the true and the fans. Diehard fans. The only ones the that matter. fans. Yep. Follow us on on Twitter. Screw the rest. To get the links and all that good stuff. Screw the rest. Okay. Screw All right, let's go back Thanks, to making guys. fun of Anthony. Yeah. So Anthony. Anthony points out here that all digital currency is hurting. Um, and again, this is this article he wrote was about twelve hours ago, uh, maybe twelve to eighteen hours ago when it actually posted up there. Um, here's a look at current all digital currency. This is on uh, CoinMarketCap.com. And this actually is not, like, false by any, any in any way, shape, or form. Everything is down. Look at the wow. seven day. Look at the twenty four hour. Look at the one hour. Wow. Everything is down. There's yeah, a couple. Be up soon enough. There's a couple that are maintaining, you know, to some degree, a level of uh, Im improvement. But Gold. there's a lot of red on this chart. There's a lot of red going on. So there's certainly something going on in the wider markets uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency in general. And it's difficult to pinpoint what exactly the cause happens to be. If you're Anthony, though, the world is coming to an end. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm making. I'm making. I'm poking. I'm hoping Anthony watches this because he's really not that reactive. But uh, on page four of his article, he notes that all currencies are down. On page five, uh, he despairs. Uh, he says, "What to see? What to expect this week?" He says. Uh, bear in mind he also titled his article Ethereum Mining is Dead so um, everything is hitting a new low um, and and you know right now it's it, it, it bottomed out, out for him at like one, 185 ish could we see below 150 in the next few days what about below 100 I feel like that's not a huge drop though from what what about below 50 from 220 to 180 that doesn't seem like a huge drop well you gotta remember drop. the peak was 400 bucks about 400 bucks is where it Okay. Max that at at least in the past couple months when yeah. it comes to, to to when it was the most profitable. Can you mine? So, can you mine multiple cryptocurrencies at once? Yes. On, on a system. In fact, okay. um, in fact, there's I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but there are mining applications you can get that will just according to what the mining application thinks, mine whatever valuable. currency is going to get you the most money Got at it. the time. So that's something you can do. You know, there's, right. there's lots of ways that you can well, go about cryptocurrency mining. I mean, at least hopefully then his whatever system he's got set up, hopefully just switched over to the next highest paying yeah. thing, which seems to be Bitcoin. Well, obviously Bitcoin's in number one. Oh, yeah, oh, Bitcoin, the value has been number one for, for quite some time just because yeah. it's valued so high. But um, there's More other ways of, of sorting this as well that you can look at. So Bitcoin and Ethereum are pretty high. Ethereum right now, as of the filming of this, is $189.84. Why, why is Ripple number three when it's only $0.17? Because worth. right now this is being sorted by... I don't know what this is being sorted by. Circulating supply? Oh. Wait. I don't know. I don't know how this is being sorted. It's just number right here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't... CoinMarketCap.com. I'm not sure how they how they sort these and how they determine. Oh, they're looking at market cap. That's what they're looking at. So depending on on the number of coins that are out there on the market and the value of the coins on the market equals the market cap. So Bitcoin has the highest market cap at thirty seven wow. billion dollars. Right. Uh, Ethereum is at seventeen billion dollars. Ripple's at six billion dollars. Look at its circulating supply. Even though the price per Ripple, but I mean that's I don't they're know thirty eight. What was that? Billion? But, I mean, you, no, you, you got to remember, yeah, cryptocurren billion. cryptocurrencies are developed by people, and they operate in different ways. So th and this one is clearly operating Billy? in a certain in a way that uh, uh, the amount of mining that you do gets you a coin at a faster rate than than the other currencies. So yeah, it's it's all relative, I guess. Course, yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Um, anyway, though, relativity. let's move on. So yeah. Point being here that regardless of the pricing changes and fluctuations of Ethereum, which can be very volatile, 
uh, the difficulty increase remains the same. So it is now more challenging to mine Ethereum. So the amount of money that you invest in getting an RX 580 or an RX 570 or 480 or whatever you're using to mine is now less valuable than it was before because the amount of work that that GPU can do to get a coin is now more than it was before because mm -hmm. more people have been mining and that's just sort of the iterative way that uh, cryptocurrencies work. It gets more challenging the more people mine it. So right. who knows how that's, this is all going to play out. We don't know. We don't know how long the, the current cryptocurrency mining craze is going to last. Hopefully at some point it drops off and there's a lot of GPUs on the market that people can buy for pretty low prices. At least if you're looking at it from the perspective of a PC gamer. Yep. All right. The next Pixel Great. XL. Uh, was sort of a, a bit of a buzzed day about this. This article is actually from The Verge. Mm -hmm. Originally, though, it was Android Police who broke this, and it's basically a picture of uh, what we can relatively reasonably presume is the next Pixel Wait, XL. I gotta compare it to mine. There it is. Oh, mine's a non-XL, but still more or less the I've, same. I have the XL, so I can... You have the XL. Give you guys, I fancy give, you some, give you guys a side-by-side. -side. So it looks pretty similar. Uh, Android Police, according to The Verge, has a very strong track record when it comes to releasing early information about smartphones, but there is a chance this might not be the finalized design of the Pixel XL 2017 or Pixel 2 XL or whatever the hell they decide to call it. It does appear to be taller. It's six inches tall and it is slimmer, so it's not quite as wide. It has a 2 to 1 aspect ratio for the display, like the LG G6, and it seems to have only one lens here on the back. If you look at the... Uh, no dual camera? So the, yeah, the, not the dual camera configuration. Dual camera. Although the lens assembly does also seem to be larger. I don't know what we can... The what seems to be larger? The, the, the lens assembly. Oh, like, lens if assembly. you look at the actual... It's tiny. So it's yeah, I've, I've got my... Yep. There's my all right, so there's a little <laughs> tiny thing in the corner there. There's my Pixel XL, and you can see the cameras are up here. I'm sorry, up here. There's my Pixel non-XL. You'll also note that the glass part of this comes down to below where the fingerprint reader is, whereas if you look at this picture, the glass comes down not quite as far. Fingerprint yeah. reader is below it. I'm okay with that it since looks the like glass... It's looks I, like it's a little, Yeah, it's about the same. I saw at least a few pictures uh, of people where they had the glass panel on the back shatter uh, oh. due to a drop or something like that so that's okay uh, that be bear in mind more. there's a, a a watermark on this so this isn't something that's like embedded into the the finish on the back or anything like that so this does seem to be probably an aluminum uh casing on the back here it that's looks nice. like it's got kind of a, a rounded edge here along the side the bezels are definitely smaller I don't like that it doesn't seem like there's front facing speakers on it it's definitely the thing I would have liked mm. to have the most on the Pixel, the speaker is no positional, mission, and you always have to have it kind of cupped in your hands to, yeah. to get good sound out of it, and it's just not the greatest. Um, what else? What, what else about this? Mm. Yeah. I heard there were, like, squeezable sides. Is that a thing? Not sure about that. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know what that these, means. These look but... like fairly standard buttons on the side. Are you talking... Oh, I totally forgot to bring it up. The, um, the red... The red cell phone. Is that what you're talking about? With the finger maybe. finger grips? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Sorry, uh, we forgot to I forgot to add that to today's list of things to talk about. There was a red camera about a week ago was announced. There's only a couple pictures of it. Marquez Brownlee did a video on it. Yeah. You guys can should watch that. <laughs> we'll do a much better job of explaining it than we will. Yeah, so yeah, all in all, the Pixel XL, I mean, design-wise, it looks, looks pretty clean. Oh, maybe, uh, or maybe people nice. are talking about the HTC 11 has squeezable sides. Oh, the U11? I'm not sure. I, I haven't 11. heard of that one. The U11, yeah. The red phone, yes, is what we were talking about. Yep. Um, That's it. That's the thing. But yeah, but we don't have that listed on today's actual discussion. From my understanding, it was mainly just that picture, but I don't know if there was more information that came out it, on it in the past few days. Hmm. I have not researched it directly. I'm pretty happy with my Pixel. I really like my Pixel as well, so... I don't think I'll feel super outdated when the Pixel 2 XL or non-XL comes out. I might get it to make a video on it, but I don't know. Yeah. I'm still on the fence about the uh, videos on phones. They're kind of hit or miss. Yeah. I mean, because cause I don't do them that often, so <clears throat> people don't look for them from me. Right. So... True. Yeah. 
YouTube probably sees it too. Like, you're a PC guy. Exactly. No one's going to watch your stupid no mobile. Cares. You don't know anything about phones. I'm going to push your that. video. All right. Um, stupid algorithm. I have a uh, straw poll that I'm linking in chat right now Ooh, uh, that goes along with this story. So if you guys are interested. Did you post in both already? You want me to? Yeah, I okay. posted both. So right. should be good. So uh, go ahead and vote on that if you uh, if you want. The Oculus has cut. I'm sorry. Oculus has cut the price of the Rift again for the second time this year. Three hundred and ninety nine dollars, including true. the Oculus touch pads as being demonstrated by this. This picture here with this dude. Noise. Um, yeah. Okay. So Oculus did a vlog cool. overnight last night. Uh, Rift and Touch, 400 bucks. That's my, a pretty good deal. My question that I'm asking you guys to answer is, um, you know, VR VR hasn't exactly taken off. There's, you know, it's, it's niche still for sure. Um, but there's still speculation that it might take off and what are the barriers to it taking off. So... My question for you guys is: Now that this is 400 bucks, do you think that VR might take off a little bit more uh, with a lower cost to entry? Um, this is for a limited time. It's part of the Summer of Rift promotion that Oculus is doing. It also includes discounts on Oculus games. There was speculation about this that there's some sort of problem or you know some issue that they're trying to work around like oh we need more sales and sales haven't been good so we need to cut the the price so that we sell more of them or whatever oculus said no that's not the case we were just waiting to drop the price until um we had more games out there so that there were more options for people to play when they actually got a, an oculus rift so mm. maybe that's true maybe it's not um in any case this price will be available for six weeks so roughly five six weeks from now um, if you're interested, so it's not like you need to buy it right now if you want to get this price, but it doesn't seem like it's going to stay this much. Um, also might have something to do with uh, the potential launch of an Oculus Rift 2. There's no further information on that, it's just speculation based on um, a lot of discussion, like when Rift first launched and their speculation on how long they thought the um, Rift as a platform would actually last and everything. Now this is a pretty significant price drop for something like this as far as a, a specific niche gaming product the article from the verge compares it to video game consoles which usually take a little bit longer before prices drop off uh, especially something like this which is a 50 percent price reduction over the initial cost of the rift mm -hmm. which was 600 bucks right. um, they said video game consoles usually take an average of three to four years before this much uh, of a before you see this much of a price drop, right? Whereas with Rift, it's been more like uh, a year. Yeah. When did it actually launch? Yeah, it's about a year. It's July now. It was supposed to launch earlier oh. last year, and it didn't, and it was delayed. And launched. Yeah, about a year ago. Yeah, yeah, about a year ago. I don't. I don't remember when it actually came out. But. Right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I guess let's let's see what you guys think about this one. We haven't given you a ton of time, but. Um, you don't need time. You're all quick. We, yeah, everyone's You're quick. You're all snappy. So. So, yeah, yes, that's all right. We've like already got a couple hundred time. people who have uh, who have voted. But yeah, so it does seem like there is interest in VR. It's just that yeah. that barrier to entry is is pretty significant. I think you needed to spend probably about fifteen hundred bucks to get a viable VR system up and running. If you're talking about the cost of the computer, that's the as well barrier. as the headset. Yeah. So, not even yeah. not even just the money. I think it's just the fact that. Like the day, like where we live, like right now, like the, the society we live in, there are not many high end gaming or, or even like desktops. Like, not many households have desktops in them like they used to. Like, like, a, high -end, like a gaming system with a like, decently powered graphics like card. Like any and stuff. desktop. I feel like the average <clears throat> household in America now, like, doesn't even know what a desktop is. Like it's all. Been or they like have a resorted. desktop, but it's like over in the corner, and no one's used it for a couple of years because yeah, it got it's really like five. Slow. It's like five, ten years old, and they're all yeah. on their tablets, their smartphones, you know, or laptops. And so I feel like that's the biggest barrier to entry. Not just not just the price of a desktop, but just the fact that people have to now seek out buying a desktop. And most likely, it's going to be a pre-built for them. They're not going to like build their own. Most people, again. Um, are not going to build their own system just for VR. They're probably going to buy a pre-built, but they're not going to know where to look. They're going to be like, well, what kind of specs do I need? What are the minimum requirements? What does that even look like? What do, what do all these numbers and model skews mean 
I feel like that's like the hugest barrier to entry. And I just pulled up an article, just like didn't take me much time to find it at all. Sony's PSVR, the PS, the PlayStation VR, has nearly quadrupled Vive sales in Q1 2017, according to Superdata, which just kind of reaffirms this this fact that like PSVR is taking off way more than Vive is, even though the functionality and like the games offered might not be nearly as innovative as what's offered on Vive, simply because people at this point are just so much more in tune with like a gaming console than they are a DIY or pre-built desktop PC. Like desktop PCs are really like, it's ironic too, because desktop PCs are like the cream of the crop when it comes to technological advancement in terms of graphic fidelity and just smooth gameplay. But at the same time, it's like the le- it's like the most underground niche in like technological society. Like everyone's just gaming on like a Xbox One or whatever, and waiting for the VR to um, introduce itself on a game console rather than them seeking out a desktop to uh, to get a higher experience. Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass completely right now because I probably have been. No, I mean that's uh, a, that's a, stuff, that's a but. significantly higher uptake in sales compared quadruple to, and that's insane uh, yeah. so, i mean think, so and think about all the the news articles that we come by like just on a daily basis how many of them are about psvr versus vive like they're all more more or less about vive and oculus because that's going to give you the most of the time the better experience but yet the sales say otherwise because people are so familiarized with consoles already and it's just easier to buy psvr oh it just works with this console that i already have as opposed to trying to figure out what sort of desktop PC. I haven't owned a desktop PC in 10 years. I didn't even know those things still existed. Like, that's... I think the the hardest thing to wrap your mind around is that there are so many gamers out there in our country that, that are not PC literate at all. Like, we think of gamers... Like, when we think of gamers, like, we think of, like, a PC enthusiast who knows their shit, who knows how to build their own system. Most gamers are... have no idea about when it comes to PC desktops. They're on consoles, but, or they're on handhelds, or but for me, that's, mobile. For me, that's know? that's okay. That is totally okay. I'm not like, knocking it. I'm, I'm just a, saying I'm that's, a, it is I'm okay what it with, is. I'm okay with the PC being niche, as long as it is still big enough to get enough sales that you know they keep making graphics cards, G- gaming GPUs, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just sort of that, you know, there's, there's people who love to play games and if they get to the point where they're playing games on a console or something like that and then they start they hear something about like oh you know i just got my psvr and like oh well actually the first vr thing was a was a vive or whatever like that and they're like oh there's this other option out there that has higher resolution and you know can play at a higher frame rate and has other capabilities and a wider library of games that are available you know that's just sort of that introduction into gaming on the pc that I think people can get excited about. So this, for me, is good news because it means that VR is not something that people were like, oh, flash in the pan, like, you know, it was, it was something that happened and then like, oh, VR, like, it's just, it was just kind of like got over it pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. It's something that people are interested in. It's just something that needs to be um, made a little bit more easy to access for people who don't have 1500 bucks to spend on a gaming PC and VR system. Right. Um, the point that the article made about this in particular was that you can feasibly get somewhat bare bones ish, but you can feasibly get a VR system up and running for closer to a thousand dollars now. Yeah. With this price, that's fair. As opposed to like fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks plus um, that you'd have to spend a little bit on before. But you know, as GPU prices hopefully come down, and uh, also hopefully the prices of the headsets. Which you can definitely expect if they come out with second generations of the headsets um, at some point, then uh, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Alright. I have I have to switch something really quick. This isn't face off. I gotta update this. I meant to update this before we started. Where's it go? Oh. What's the name of that VR technology where it only renders okay. the pixels you're looking at and it says fuck off to the, all the <clears> other ones around it? What's it called again? Um, the, um, I don't, I don't remember. You know what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't, <clears throat> don't remember the name of it. Um, it's killing me. Chat, please help me out. For some reason, I was, like, thinking about that, and I'm like, what's it called? Oh. 
Like fellation or no? Fellation. Yes, it's fellation. It's not fellation. Fellation. Something similar to that, though. It's an Nvidia thing. I'm crazy. <clears throat> I have like a bunch of Nvidia um, PDFs that they've sent me with their their marketing stuff, and I bet it's in one of those. Yeah. Fellatio. Fellatio. VR. VR fellatio. <laughs> yes. That's what my wife uh, thought. That can't be right. Okay. <laughs> it's time for Netwatch. Yes, it is. The segment where we talk about the internet. Foveated. And, and Foveated. watching. Foveated? Foveated. Foveated. I think you're right. Foveated rendering. Foveated rendering. Thank God. You're right. Thank God. Fellatio rendering. See, I was somewhat with close with fellatio. Some, Bye, I was in the same Felicia. ballpark. I was in the same ball. I was at least in the same ballpark. Mm -hmm. Foveated rendering. The more you know. Okay. There it is. There it is. People know more things now. Remember it. Know it. Live it. <clears throat> All right. Carry on, Paul. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, has released their uh, "Who Has Your Back" list, a list that they've been doing for a few years now, which uh, basically talks about. Uh, it, I'm sorry, it analyzes and evaluates how uh. companies deal with user data when government entities mm. come seeking it. Mm. If you want to be private online and you want to deal with companies who will respect your privacy, yes. then this list perhaps is something you should be looking at. Couldn't you just get a VPN? Would a VPN work essentially the same? No. Okay, no. Because it doesn't matter if you used a track. VPN to access Amazon, you gave Amazon your information, and if the government says, hey, Amazon, what's the information of that guy who bought that thing, and they give you their information, it doesn't matter what uh, VPN you so. used. I guess you're right. So, yeah, that's not really a concern. Um, anyway, the full, list, the full list is here. It's also linked in the video's description on EFF.org. And um, who has your back? Government data requests for 2017. Uh, the top-rated companies for 2017 include Adobe. You can see at the top here, you got, got five stars, in the stars house. across the entire wow. thing, as well as Credo Mobile, Dropbox, Lyft, Pinterest, Sonic, Uber, Wicker, and WordPress. Lyft's got five of five stars here. Where's Uber? Huh. Uber also got five of five stars wow. here. So you can look across the whole Shop list. It's fairly Uber. easy to, to check the out. the AT&T, Comcast, of course. Wow, Amazon, yes. surprisingly shitty. Lowest rated companies. The companies that got a one star were Comcast, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. What do you know? The four major internet service providers. Huh. Who would have expected the huh. companies that have like the worst customer feedback ratings in the United States <laughs> happen to also get one star ratings <laughs> On here, for as far as protecting pr privacy, even T-Mobile, who's like, we're T-Mobile and we're different, and we like better. Than <laughs> no, that. you're the same no. bullshit. Same bullshit. I'm surprised yeah. that Facebook has such a high Verizon. Rate. Four out of five. Yeah, not Facebook bad. has improved. Nice. Um, I think since they started doing this list, actually. Um, All right. So yeah, I'm cool with that. Comcast, AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon yeah. got one star. Uh, Amazon and WhatsApp. Got two stars, so all you guys who are like Amazon Prime Day and buying oh, stuff, Prime Day. what do you think of them with the with your privacy information? Um, a new category that was added this year is stands up to NSL gag orders, um, which are the national security letters, which uh, if they're presented to a company, basically mean that company is being forced to hand over data to the government. And there's a built-in gag order, which means the company can't even publicly say, "Hey, by the way." Our information was just sent over to the government because they asked for it. They can't even tell people that it's mm. even been requested. Mm. So um, whether or not people comply with that, or the businesses comply with that, is one of the stars on this list, as well as following industry-wide best practices, telling users about government data requests, promising not to sell out users, or just having some sort of written thing that says, hey, people who use our service, we're not going to sell you out. It's good to have. Standing up to the NSL gag orders, of course, and pro-user public policy on Reform 702. And if you click the link in this video's description that goes to this page, you can click on those links in them to read a little bit more information about them. For now, though, let's move on. Net neutrality. Big issue right now. We've been talking about it pretty regularly on the live show. And uh, just want to say that it is a big deal. And tomorrow uh, is July 12th, and net neutrality has a day of action. 
And AT&T is joining in. What do you think? What? AT&T joins the net neutrality protest. Despite suing to block net neutrality. Yes, despite <laughs> despite the fact that they have sued the FCC in the past to attempt to block <laughs> net neutrality rules, AT&T is attempting to tell people, yeah, we're part of this too. Uh, and we are in favor no. of preserving no. and advancing an open internet. But their idea of what an open internet is very different than uh, perhaps what your idea of an open internet is. So, here's the situation right now. The FCC has situated internet service providers so that they are classified as common carriers under Title II of the Telecommunications Act of 1934, which allows the FCC to enforce net neutrality. It is because of that classification that the FCC can say, hey, you can't throttle this website or tell them that they don't have access. You can't slow down Netflix because you've determined that Netflix is just using up too much of the data. If you promise your customers that they have this amount of bandwidth for data, you can't suddenly say like, hey, you're actually using that, so we're going to throttle you or throttle this website that's using that you're accessing that's using too much of that data. Yeah. They should just provide you with the amount of bandwidth that you pay for. Internet service providers like AT&T are like, hey, we're down with net neutrality. We don't think that there should be throttling of different websites or something like that. But they're not really standing behind their statements. Because what the FCC is tr trying to do right now is roll back the protections that people currently have that are currently in place. AT&T, when they were first put in place in 2015, when they first classified ISPs as Title II, uh, common car carriers, AT&T sued them. Obviously, they were against this. So, where, whereas AT&T, as well as Ajit Pai and the FCC will say, we're in favor of net neutrality, they need to actually put their money where their mouth is and have some sort of plan in place to enforce this. Because what they're talking about right now is removing the rules that allow the FCC to enforce it. But there's nothing that's being presented as like, and instead... Here's a thing that all the ISPs will sign that promises not to be assholes or whatever like that. They're Ultimate not even doing solution. anything like that. Yeah. All they're saying is like, there shouldn't be regulation or whatever like that. And if you're in the position where you think, well, like, regulations are bad or whatever, just look at what happened in 2014. Um, and I bet, I bet I could pull it up right now. But um, in 2014, because Netflix had become so popular, ISPs, lo and behold, suddenly started throttling them. Mm. And, um, and, and, yeah, it, and it sucked. Uh, I'm trying to... <laughs> <laughs> oh there's, there's a specific thing I'm going to try to find right now. On the so, floor. I mean, what I'm wondering is, is AT&T using this as sort of like a, a marketing, a marketing thing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're trying to pretend like they're on our side when really they have ulterior motives and they're just as corrupt and evil as the other ISPs. Yeah. But they're trying to pretend like they're one of us to get to get either gain our trust or, you know, it seems like a marketing stunt to me because it really is not there it is. in their best interest Sorry, this to is, join that neutrality. So the oatmeal, the oatmeal.com slash blog slash net underscore neutrality has a nice... Uh, comic where he goes over this whole thing. He specifically did this as a response to something Ted Cruz said. But this very clearly also shows uh, what happens in 2014 as all of the major ISPs, AT&T, Verizon, uh, all started to throttle. Uh, Comcast providers as well. Comcast is a black line right here. Netflix service suddenly started to tank across the board. This is direct action by internet service providers doing something that requires net neutrality to prevent it happening. If you don't want internet service providers to be able to do this for your connection to Netflix or whatever other high, you know, whatever other service you connect to that happens to use a lot of data that your ISP sounds like, hold on, that data that we it. promised that you paid for, suddenly we don't want to provide you anymore because you're actually using it. Um, if you don't want that to be able to happen, then net neutrality is the means by which the FCC can prevent internet service providers from doing that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Sketchy, man. All that is to say, oh no, I just I just closed Sketchy. I just closed my next story instead of. There were a couple uh, providers up there that did not throttle the speeds in that instance, though. I yeah, Google, 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 Google Fiber. Fiber, and then uh, what was the other one? Stop Some it. Another stupid uh, co uh, Cox. Yeah, Cox. So there. I mean, we're Cox. talking about the. We're mainly talking about the large internet service providers that have enough uh, customers and enough monopoly in a lot of areas to basically throw their weight around and do whatever they want to make as much money as they possibly sure. can. Um, anyway, going back to the day of action, which is happening tomorrow, has now been uh, uh, joined by Google and Facebook. Uh, giants, stop it. tech giants. Yes, so they're now giving the net neutrality campaign tomorrow a boost. Uh, Google and Facebook uh, have not released any details as to how they will be supporting this, but I would assume that when you go to the homepage, there might be some information there. Oh, yeah. Little green man, sorry. Thanks, chat. And just for any of you guys who are maybe acting as um, um, disseminators of information, if you have any family members who aren't familiar with this and tomorrow see some message on their favorite website and they come to you and they're like, hey, this website I just went to that I love has this message about net neutrality and I don't know what the heck they're talking about. Explain like, it to them. This is what the day of action is about tomorrow is spreading this information in a, in a means that people can understand and uh, hopefully a means that um, phrases it in such a way that people know that what really is in the best interest of everyone is that there's uh, neutral communication between different internet that we all uh, have diff different that uh, we all have access websites. to Pornhub that everyone has access to Pornhub. That really is what it yes. boils down to. If you want to put it in the simplest terms to someone who wants to understand net neutrality, just be like, like Pornhub? Yeah. Well, imagine not having that anymore. That fucking sounds shitty, dude. What if your internet well, that's service net provider partnered with a really crappy porn website, and yeah. they're like, hey, we only want people to access that porn website now because every time people go to that porn website, yep. we get a bit of advertising money. So we're going to slow down all the other yep. porn websites yep. so that people only really have the most incentive to go to that porn website. But on that porn website, all they've got is, like, you know, like, grandma porn. You only have X stuff. hamster. Like, yeah. They just, like, you know, short shorthand you on the clips. Like, all the clips are, like, three minutes long. Like, it's, what the fuck is this? It's, like, lemon party, like, times a thousand yeah. going on there. And, like, who's interested in that? Like, I'm going to I'm gonna right. come right when the, as the video's ending. Who wants that? Nobody. No one. So yes, not, the uh, world, not my world, not, to, not the world I live in. Tomorrow there will be lots of people asking questions about why websites they go to have special information ab uh, on them about net neutrality. Hopefully, you guys, if you're asked questions, can help answer them. Uh, this is reminiscent of the day in 2012 when the tech industry rebelled against the copyright bill known as SOPA, uh, and they altered and SOPA. blacked out their websites to help spread information and knowledge about it. Uh, there's also a chance that a popular outcry could lead Congress or the White House to put pressure on Ajit Pai and the FCC to reconsider the plan on net neutrality. And, uh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Kyle, you're the hero we deserve. That's, great. That's a great way to describe things. So, yeah. Shouldn't be allowed to stream anymore. Help support that, guys. Thanks to all you who have uh, listened important. to us about it. But um, I think information is really important and I think free access to information is incredibly important. Porn is information. And I, if you want to put it in terms where it's where porn is what speaks to you that's cool. I think there's a I think there's an, a, a larger conversation beyond that as well but it all depends on who you're talking to and uh, yeah. the best way to get your point across so however that happens to be just please, trying to, please I'm just go trying for to it. cater to our audience Paul. No, I agree. You're probably doing a better job than I am, for sure. <laughs> but, uh, all right, let's move We believe in you, chat. We love you. Another segment, which is going to be Hot and Heavy Hardware. Yeah! This is a special edition of Hot and Heavy Hardware. This Woo! is Intel edition. Intel edition. And I want to say this is like the sort of negative edition of Hot and Heavy Hardware, because we're literally talking about hardware that is too hot. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Overheating edition. But before we get it specifically Hold into X299, edition. since that's what I was refer referencing there, the Intel Pentium G4560 uh, is a good CPU. I've recommended it. 
I imagine you maybe have as well. Which one? Uh, the oh, G4560. It yes. is a Pentium CPU. Yep. Look, here's the and, box. And uh, Gamers Nexus has done extensive um, yeah. testing on this chip. It's only got two cores. Core i3 killer. Yep. Only got two cores, but yep. um, Intel has, with the Pentiums in the past couple uh, lineups, actually introduced hyper-threading. So it's got hyper-threading. So two cores, four threads, three megs of L3 cache, up from two. Uh, 3.5 gigahertz frequency, KB Lake CPU architecture, and $64. So cheap! Why not? So, a very easy to recommend CPU for people who are building a budget system. Yeah. Intel has decided it sucks, and they don't like it. What? Um, it's, because it's uh, competing it makes, with themselves, right? Because with it competes with their i3 processors, which cost, cost more money. So why would anyone buy an i3 processor when they can get a 4560 for 64 bucks, the price to performance is really significantly skewed when you go up to the i3 level. So, Intel, seeing that they have a popular processor that people like and are interested in buying and has a good price to performance metric, has decided to limit the production of that CPU. No! Yes. Of course. No! What else could you possibly do, Kyle? No. Scale down production of the G4560. This is according to a report on DigiWorthy, by the way. So it's their fault if it's wrong. <clears throat> um, scaling down production of a CPU like this would probably, potentially, I don't know for sure because I can't predict the future, but knowing how economics work lead to price inc increases, lead to the lack of availability of that processor, potentially both. So the uh, gravy train ride that was the 4560 that you can get for about 65 bucks apparently is over. <clears throat> no. The cheapest i3 that you can get as a replacement is the i3-7100. Costs almost twice as much at $117. and has basically the same chip, just runs at 3.9 gigahertz instead of 3.5 gigahertz. So you're getting a couple, has a, a few hundred megahertz higher clock speed. That's it. Yeah. For double price. For for roughly double the price. Yes. That sounds unreasonable. That sounds pretty stupid. I'm gonna go with the sixty-four dollar CPU. Well, you would if you could buy it, but apparently they're not gonna be available anymore, and that's a, a really? poor decision on Intel's part. At really? least that's my opinion. Let's continue hot and heavy hardware with the discussion. All right, so let's. I'm gonna make this a compliment sandwich, but in the reverse. Mmm, sandwiches. The compliments in the middle and the crappy stuffs on the outside. I freaking love sandwiches. In the middle we have this i9-7900X that has been Ooh. overclocked to 6.01 gigahertz. Ooh, yeah. So, um, yeah, if you don't care too much about Sexy. pricing, it's a little bit easier to get excited about the 7900X because it is a thousand dollar processor, but it is very par powerful. It's 10 core CPU. Uh, the world record was set by Greek overclocker Sophos 1990. And Sophos. as you can see, he used a pink hair dryer, which I think was pretty cool. That's yeah, um, pretty but, baller. But yeah, the 7900X was overclocked to 6.01 gigahertz on LN2 liquid nitrogen. Uh, it scored 12,189.52 in Hardware Bot's Prime Benchmark, which is the fastest 10 core score in the world. It is also the fastest single CPU system on that particular benchmark, so it's only been surpassed by dual CPU rigs, probably Xeon based, I would imagine. Uh, to achieve that frequency, it had a V core voltage of 1.6 volts, which is pretty high if you're not using it yeah. on something like LN2. CPU multiplier was at 59, and the bus speed was at 102. Uh, the G, I'm sorry, the uh, other hardware that was used, which you can sort of see in this picture is the Gigabyte X299 SoC Champion motherboard, uh, a kit of G-Skill Trident Z memory at 20, I'm sorry, at 3263 megahertz, so also overclocked, a 120 gig Corsair Neutron SSD and a Corsair AX1500i power supply. All that's led to that overclock and world records. Yay. Yay! So given the right configuration, 7900X can be pretty impressive. But that's, uh, that's talking about a hardcore overclocker using LN2. What about normal people? Normal <laughs> people. What about normal people who just, who just get people. a 7900X and just plug it yeah. in and just want to use it? Uh, you might have some challenges to deal with. So 
I've been looking pretty closely at X299 because I've been trying to get to the point where I can say, well, sure it's overpriced and sure it doesn't make that much sense for most people, but it maybe it's still the fastest thing that's out there and the fastest thing that's available. Mm -hmm. But maybe that that's not always the case. Um, I have I don't know two what you're doing. links in the description. One is for this article on Tom's Hardware, just posted yesterday by Igor Wasilek. Um, which is a four-page article talking about the current state of X299 as well as problems, especially when it comes to overclocking. So they did some significant amount of overclocking um, using... Uh, they were testing the temperature of the VRMs, so the voltage regulators, the power delivery going to the system, as well as testing the uh, CPU core temperature. The 7900X basically runs really hot. Even so if you have a decent AIO, like even a 240, like a 240 grad. millimeter all in one uh, all in one cooler, is like your baseline for a 7900X. That's apparently. crazy. And it can't even get uh, even I up think, above I there. Think JJ from Asus was like, even like the big ass Noctua cooler, like the air coolers from Noctua, like they still have a challenge. Don't with fully it, yeah. rely on them because they're not going to cut it. Like so which is insane. It's almost like you need liquid cooling for something like this. Yeah. Now, this article, I also believe, is a bit of a response for De, uh, to De, Der Bauer, Der Bauer, who posted a little over a week ago about the sort of X299 VRM disaster, as he described it, which was referring specifically to attempting to overclock on X299 with a series of different motherboards, and the motherboards basically having a wide array of different reactions as far as the VRM temperatures uh, overclocking frequencies they were able to hit, uh, temperatures of the CPU as well, and just general instability and inconsistency of performance across different... Between boards? Yeah, uh, uh, between different boards and different platforms. Huh. Um, so the Tom's Hardware article goes into some of that as far as their testing configurations, how they're setting up, how they're measuring uh, stuff like temperatures of the VRMs. Do you um, know what like the sort of delta was between like the coolest running board and the hottest running board in terms of VRM or CPU temps? Like, um, kind of... No, kind it's, of it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to make a generic statement about that. In this yeah. article, they're using the MSI X299 Gaming Pro Carbon AC, um, but it's... So, like, when you're talking about VRMs and the components in VRMs, they're often rated at much higher temperatures. They're rated, actually, to run at temperatures up to, like, 125C or something like that. Right. Whereas the... Uh, I believe the uh, 7900X will start to throttle at about 95C. Mm -hmm. But the temperature measurements for a lot of the power delivery components are not taken on the power delivery component itself. There's not a temperature mm. uh, sensor that's built onto that component. So the sensors are placed on the PCB that might be right next to the component. Right. So it might not be actually testing the temperature of the, of the component itself. Sure. It might be getting something that's similar Proximity, to that. Yeah. And of course, there's different motherboards, different implementations of the power delivery that operate yeah. in different ways. Mm. Um, as far as the article goes, um, they do specifically point out, and uh, let me get to that second page. Uh, they do specifically point out in the second page one of the big complaints that I feel like has been across the board about Skylake X, which is the uh, thermal interface material that they used uh, between the heat spreader and the CPU itself. And there's our, there are charts from their temperature testing when it comes to the temperature of the uh, heat spreader, they noticed that there was a very significant glaring temperature difference between the heat spreader on top and the cores of the CPU underneath, which they attributed to crappy thermal interface material. Uh, on the third page, scroll down a little bit more, there's more details in these articles, you guys, if you want more information, again, linked in the description, so I encourage you to check them out. Um, but yeah, Basically, depend. Uh, uh, sorry, here's a quote from the article. Depending on whether you use enhanced turbo option, which is an, uh, an option in the Skylake X CPUs, depending on whether you use that or not, power consumption in excess of 230 watts in AVX heavy workloads can happen, or as high as 200 watts without AVX right out of the box, without overclocking or anything like that, which is completely not in the realm of what an air cooler can support. 
yeah. the listed TDP of a 7900, 7900X is 140 watts. So that's significantly out of the range of what you would expect. So even going with the what you would expect to be fairly conservative measurements from Intel, they're usually very conservative about conservative about this stuff, is not being supported by your typical air cooler. Mm -hmm. um, I have a 7900X with a Master Air Pro 4 on it right now, and I'm pretty sure when I'm actually putting it under load that it is cause it's probably throttling. Wow. Simply, simply because it's just an air cooler on there. So I'm going to take a closer look at that soon. I built that system kind of hastily. It's crazy how quickly the tides um, have turned where, like, AMD was, like, the go-to, like, ah, you're overheat, you're an overheating, hot, running chip. Yeah. That's all point finger. And now it's totally Intel. Like, like all the Ryzen processors run super cool for the most part. Like, a lot of, like, especially the, the 65-watt TDP parts. It's like, oh, my God, you can get away with, like, the included Wraith Spire cooler on that and on most of them and get away with, like, the maximum overclock you could possibly push on some of those SKUs, whereas Intel now is struggling to even be tamed by the most high-end air coolers, which is quite, quite interesting. And it does seem like if Intel had taken just a little bit more time or invested a little bit more in the materials that go into the construction of these CPUs, if they had gone with something like a soldered interface between the IHS, IHS and the CPU core, mm. they might be dealing... It wouldn't completely negate these problems. It would help a little. But it would certainly help. Yeah. So Der Bauer is uh, one of the ones who first talked a lot Green about man. this. Oh, Green Man. Sorry, Green He's Man. called out. <laughs> My bad, Green Man. <laughs> I'm done, so I... I have, oh, you're I have nothing to worry about you, you at this point. There's no, I'm good. Those are empty? I am not drinking anymore. <clears throat> probably probably plenty, a good idea. Plenty good. So Debar first did his X X299 VRM disaster video, which is here in English. He's done an update to that. Um, and, yeah, basically he was working with several people who looked at his original video and were trying to replicate those those uh, the scenario that he set up that caused the VRMs to overheat uh, when overclocking on with Skylake X processors. Uh, Tiny Tom Logan uh, from the UK attempted to recreate those, had some difficulty with it. DeBauer worked with him. They did a collaboration video. There's a couple videos on both sides. <clears throat> In this video, specifically, DeBauer talks about the situation or the way he configured the test system in order to create the situation that caused the VRMs to overheat. Which was nothing like crazy over the top or anything like that. And I apologize, I don't have all of my notes together for this one. This is where we ran out of time as we were getting ready for the show to start. But he specifically re references <clears throat> certain things such as the power switching states of the processors and the fact that they might throttle so quickly that uh, certain software applications like CPU-Z might not catch it. Mm. Um, also, there's more in the video. I, I, I'd, I'd like to say more details right now, but I think I'm really getting to the point where if I attempted to uh, go into it further, I might say things that were completely incorrect. We'll, we'll both just show how much, how little we know about it. Pretty, pretty much. Topic. That's what I'm risking here. Indeed. High so, level. We'll keep it high level. Yeah, the Tom's Hardware article um, was talking about how a lot of the blame at the initial launch of this platform was placed on motherboard manufacturers because the CPU power delivery configurations weren't up to snuff. Um, I think what's sort of leveled out here is that there's definitely blame to be placed on both sides. Cooling better of the... V having better cooling for the VRMs would definitely have helped. MSI, for example, instead of doing their plastic plates that cover the, that you can customize with your name on it or whatever yeah, that yeah. they did, yeah. might have been better invested in just making sure the VRMs functionally. were functionally dissipating as much heat as they possibly could. True. But there's definitely, of course, blame on the Intel side as well. Of course. Because when it comes to overclocking in particular, there's just a lot of variance between different motherboards, uh, depending on like uh, the current setting as far as CPU power delivery goes. If it's set to 100%, you might not see the same uh, situation that Derbaris, uh in encountered, but if you set it to 130 or 140% that's available in the 
uh, motherboard UF, UEFI that might actually cause that situation to happen. So, right. again, I encourage you guys to check out those videos if you want a little bit more detail on that. Interesting. Because that's about as far as I could get today. Oh, I did. I did have better notes on that. I had better notes on it, and it, and it went away. But it's all right. We're getting we're getting late. It's getting late in the day. The point is, screw X299. You should all just abandon it. X299 is is a, a challenge. Sham. It's a sham. It's not good. I don't want to. I don't want to give on, up on it completely. I feel like there's still very no. niche situations where it's a Definitely. where where it, it's it still might be the best. But yeah. But yeah, that, that really sucks. Uh, oh, the power delivery for the power delivery for X299. If it's just an eight pin, they were testing some of the cables and finding that the, that the cables could get really hot because uh, if you overclock and the power draw becomes becomes significant, mm -hmm. um, that can be an issue. So going with a power delivery system that has at least eight plus four pin, four pin or eight plus eight pin for wow. the motherboard might be a better option for you. All right. Which is also something that we've discussed in the past and be like it doesn't matter because the CPU can never actually pull that much mm. but these CPUs are actually seem to be getting more towards that which is crazy right. especially when you consider that we're only up to the 10 core model that's out actually out and available right now yeah. and Intel is still supposed to be giving us 12 14 16 and 18 core options coming yeah. in the next few months it's crazy. it's crazy to see how this might actually still be viable on this platform but if they're able to pull it off, that'll be somewhat uh, impressive. And Threadripper is expected. Um, well, Vega is expected at the end of this month. I yep. don't know. I don't know beyond. I don't know anything about Thread Threadripper. Just shut up. <laughs> all right. Either. That's all for my prepared material for this episode. So Let's we uh, dive into some quick Q and A. We have some questions that have been submitted with some uh, some donations. So thanks to you guys Eek. who have been supporting us in that manner. Uh, we'll run down that really quickly. Beautiful. All right, Where first we one we've got here is from uh, Fred Rant for $15. Was wondering if you did not want any money. LOL, here's your share. Will yeah. you be able to share the $200 when you do the pie challenge? Um, We could. I mean, if could, it was very specifically like, hey, here's 200 bucks. Paulo's Kyle 100. What, what you could like, do we'll is just We'll remember do, that. We'll remember that. What you could do is just do 100 on each half. Or 100 on, e on each half is, is also fine. That works. That way we don't have to do but it. We do. Like, you can just handle yeah. it. That, it makes it easier for us. But we do want to work that out. Yeah. Uh, money, we, we like money. We don't want to turn anyone away. No. No, no money shall be turned away. Uh, MB67 for the 20 bucks. Love the show, Paul, even if you don't stream it publicly. LOL. Ah. Here's $20 for a nice six-pack of craft beer. Why, thank you. Cheers. That's... You can that get should, a nice yeah, six pack I'm for twenty dollars. That might get us a twelve pack. That's in. like the best six pack you could possibly buy. You That'd should never like there a six pack for more than twenty dollars does not exist. Divi Chow, Divi Chow for the five dollar. Divi Chow, holy shit! Hmm. But the Samsung GS8 a wireless charger and the VR headset with it, all six hundred dollar from Prime Day. Damn. Can you say VR porn? Oh yeah! Uh. <laughs> you two are great. Be on me. Wow, TV, you, you, I, I, you are just too special. I feel like you're you, too much. I feel like when you do that voice, it's, it's exactly what he had in mind the whole time. That is what I imagine TV sounds He's like. Like, can you say VR porn? <laughs> okay. He, he like, yeah. what if we met TV in person one day, like at a fan meetup, and he sounded exactly like? Oh, that. I was thinking you were gonna say, what like, if he's just like a fat, a fat white dude or something? Or he's like, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm TV. Damn TV. TV. Old, Either way, thanks baby. for the donation, sir. <clears throat> uh, good luck on your with your uh, your VR headset. Hayden, Hayden with five dollars. Five bucks. Would you give advice against gaming on a forty-three inch four K TV? Also, any news on the new not to a fans? So uh, to address the four K TV, I wouldn't say mm. against it. I would uh, very much be interested in if that TV has a gaming mode that turns yes. off post processing exactly. to eliminate input, input lag. lag. Yep, that'd be the best thing. Other than that, you're probably you're gonna have a four K. Probably 60 hertz experience. Yep. Which isn't terrible. Which is fine, man. Totally fine. Uh, not, uh, new Noctua fans, I have no information <laughs> on that. I've watched several videos that people have covered at uh, Computex recently about the new Noctuas, and I have nothing to comment. Really small gap between the fan blades and the housing. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Blade. That's what we know. Blade housing gap or whatever. Ulysses Lyra, $5 donation, was here since the beginning. BB. BB. And we, we acknowledge that. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm proud. We respect that. 
here. So, yep. kudos to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, or, or madame. Super Pie Games SPG for the 50. Knock. Finally. Knox. Dono is back. And really love you guys. So, it was a Twitter link, 4.30 a.m. Norway. Twitter.com. Not sure what that means. And this is a Twitter link. It looks like a really good Twitter link. There's a very long number at the end. Yeah. Long, the longer the number, the more interesting the, the link. That's what I found in my experience. Thank you, Super Pie. Thanks, Super Pie. Buffalo Warrior 7, $5.55. Uh, 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 had, uh, uh, had to battle an unlisted video to donate. Kyle oh. Pine Drops is a decent IPA, but like the Get Bent from Parkway out of Salem, Virginia. Try to find it. Pine Drops. Pine Drops is a decent that sounds, IPA. That sounds good. That's a good name for a beer. Pine Drops, yeah. It's like it, it dropped out of the trees or something. Get Bent. Get Bent from Parkway out of Salem, Virginia is also a good one I should try. Get Bent from Parkway. Okay. I'll try to remember that. Thanks for the uh, suggestion there, Buffalo. Coda! $5. Coda. Have you had any beer from Against the Grain Brewing Company? Against the Grain Brewing Company? Never heard of them. Never that's a good stuff. That's a good uh, Bad Religion song, though. Uh, it's a good beer brewing company name, too. It's Against the Grain, get it? Because they're dealing with grains, like the, the wheat. Or the I guess that makes sense. Yeah. There's, there's, there's some there's some wordplay there. Yeah. Uh, Luke, uh, not five dollars. It's more likely that we're a projection on the surface of an event horizon than inside of VR. Totally agree. Couldn't agree more. Yes, you're right. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> El Jefe reviews again for the ten dollars. I picked up a Z Z170 Maximus. Eight hero, hundred and eighteen dollars after mail and rebate. That's a really good price. And sixteen gigs of Trident Z RGB DDR4 from Newegg. Should I go i5 7600K or i7 7700K for 1080p gaming and YouTube channel video editing? I will say, if you're doing some hardcore video editing, you're doing that regularly. The i7 is nice because it is hyper threaded uh, and it's got four cores, eight threads. I would even possibly consider Ryzen if you're doing any sort of workstation applications whatsoever because you're going to be getting more threads and cores as a result for either not much more money or less money than what you could get for an equivalent uh, mainstream Intel processor. Um, so check out check out maybe like a 1600, like an R5 1600 perhaps, or even an R7 1700. Um, that's that's what I've said in all my recent videos. Like, <laughs> all my recent videos. It's like, if you're just gaming, just go with Intel. But if you're doing anything else besides gaming, then just do Ryzen. That's what I've said in, like, every other video. Advice. It would be wrong of me to go against that uh, that opinion now, so that's what I'm going to stick true to right, real quick, at this point. Real quick, Super Pie Games, because he's, he's going crazy in chat. This was his Twitter link. <laughs> He has the wood case. It's a 4930K CPU at 4.5 gigahertz, 32 gigs of RAM, a Zotac Amp Extreme, and a 1080 Ti custom loop. Uh, uh, that's that's pretty, a cool. That's a cool case. Is it the uh, wood, wood is paneling? Fantex, right? I think. No, NZXT. What case is this? Uh, it looks like. The <laughs> It looks like an NZXT, I feel like. Yeah, right? I'd say NZXT, like a Switch yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's cool, though. That's definitely wood paneled. Woody! Nice case. Giving me a firm Woody, for that's for sure. All right. Next up, we've got... Where do we leave off? Knowledge. Right? Uh, no, yes. No, no, no. Knowledge. Knowledge $7.77. Random pop quiz. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Ministry of Truth. What book is this from? Cheer guys. Cheers, guys. I love your content. 1984. That's from... I was going to say Fifty Shades of Grey, but you're probably right. Right? Yeah, 1984. You're probably Thanks, right. Knowledge. That's a good book. Everyone should read it. Uh, Cardoc221, $10 donation. Dual Xeon 5687, small business server converted to gaming yep. content creation PC, rocking an AMD 7950. Upgrade the graphics and add RAM or sell the system and build a six core Ryzen system. Uh, mm. gosh. I mean, Xeon Dual 5687, you, you have a lot of compute power there. Sorry, did I miss the green man? Yep. You got a lot of compute power there, but. Uh, did the graphics if your concern is gaming, um, mm -hmm. frequency is definitely going to be very significantly important to you. True. Um, 
so yeah, I would, I would consider a six, something like the six score Ryzen system because I think we get a nice boost in IPC. Yeah. Um, right off the bat, and you'll be able to overclock and get a higher frequency. So. Indeed. There you go. That's my uh, suggestion. Matt Grimes for five dollars. Where can I buy Debauer Delid Mate Two? The only website I can find that has it is CaseKing.de. Doesn't ship to the USA. Thanks for being awesome. I don't know. Yeah, that might be your only option for now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he's a small. He's just a dude selling stuff. So you know, out of his backyard, pretty much. So. Um, is this is this a two? I don't know if this is a two or not. Is that a delitting? Does it? You have a delitting tool? Yeah. Debauer. Yeah. Did he send you one or? No, I, I, he physically handed, handed it to, to you me at, uh, Computex? at Computex. Nice. Are you gonna put it to use? So this is this is for LGA 1150, 1151. Better put that shit CPUs. to use, bruh. Um, but yeah, it's way better than than other delitting methods because it's much more precise. So, which means less risky and less less uh, prone to damage. Yeah, but I know I know he's I know he's been working on the shit. one for the um. Uh, for the the current generation, the LGA twenty sixty six stuff, but like they're still working on it. <laughs> yeah, it's work in progress. So thank it's also, you very it's much. also a big challenge because right now he's got up to the seventy nine hundred X, but once it goes up beyond that, it's going to be the, the larger dies on yeah. the seventy nine twenty, seventy nine forty, seventy nine sixty, and seventy nine eighty. So if he makes one right now that works for one. And then those other CPUs start coming out, and people try to use it on those other CPUs. It mm. might actually damage those CPUs because of the size of the die, as well as other surface-mounted uh, hardware that's on there. So right. it's a difficult thing to do when you're trying to bring a product to market like that. Indeed. So yeah, business stuff. Uh, thank you very much, though, Matt Grimes. BBQ ribs, barbecue ribs, barbecue ribs. five dollars. I'm starting a small business: yeah. resin casting, making mechanical keyboard caps. And collectible resin toys. Any tips for starting a small business? Um, hmm. No. <laughs> I mean, not that I don't think you should. Just yeah. that I don't. I don't have any tips. Give it. Give it your all. Maintain your life. Maintain it. a reasonable social media presence. I don't know. I feel like that's a marketing. Yeah. Tactic for. Get get in. Yeah. Get get in contact with Mass Drop. That'll get yeah. you on the map. Yeah, for for keyboard caps, are you kidding? That's for resin that's, based, that's a good choice. Double yeah. injection shot, whatever. Get they hit do up, lots of that. Hit stuff. up Mass Drop. They're always looking for like underground shit to you know be like stand out from the rest of the mainstream. Hit up Mass Drop and see like, hey, can I just do like a like a you know a small sale or whatever on your website? Maybe that could put you on the grid or put you on the map somewhere. Yeah, maybe maybe keyboard manufacturers as well try to get a partnership going or something like that. Yeah. Anything that has a larger audience than you do that can give you more exposure. Just um, use people. Yeah, just use that. Just whore yourself out. Use be a that. whore. Don't be afraid to be a whore. Don't tell your parents I said that. Yep. Thank you very much, Barbecue Ribs. Sticks, $10. Donated last week and got two guys, one, screw, uh, two guys, one screw, screwdriver comment. Thanks, guys, for the laughs. Keep up the great work. Attempting to do some PC building time lapses of my own. Love the content. Uh, two guys, one screwdriver. Do you remember that? Wait, how did that come up? I don't even want to know why that was mentioned. <laughs> Only vaguely. <laughs> Only vaguely. This is why this is the why we should be should required be to rewatch the live show <laughs> no. the next day. Every I day. never rewatched any I, of I our know. shows because I'm just no. It's the just occasional too much. time I'm I'm like I like have to actually pull it up. I'm like oh god that's that's terrible. <laughs> one day. Why? You know what? One day. Why does anyone watch? That? As much as I hate them so much, we should one day like maybe for like our. 1,000th episode or something, oh, or 500th, yeah. do like a, like, Kyle and Paul react Reaction to, to a to... compilation of just best moments. We'll have, like, Cell or maybe a couple other moderators yeah, that'd draft be good. it. That'd be kind of fun. But we'd have to watch it while we're drinking, just to not super cringe super hard. And then we'd have, have to follow up to that be... where we react to the one we're reacting. <laughs> yeah, right. Then we just, then <laughs> we just, just be like, window within a window within out. a window. Draw that out window. as far as we can go. Reactception. I go yes. pretty far. Thank you very much, Sticks, for that beautiful idea. Jake3D, $5. Do you both use an editor or just Paul? How much do they edit versus your edit after? How long have you used an editor? So, fun fact, I uh, was working with this guy named Joe, and he uh, helped me do some video editing for projects in the past and CES last year 
And then I introduced him to Paul, and super, they started working together. Super shady. Super, super shady. shady stuff, under the table, you know, no, evading taxes and all that. No, 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 no none of that frisky business. Uh, and then I introduced Joe to Paul, and then Joe started um, editing more videos more frequently for Paul. Um, and for a while there, I was not really uh, doing any contract work with Joe at all, until recently he's edited probably two videos for me in the last month or so. Um, and he's got, there's another one on its way. So Joe is actually kind of double fisting both me and Paul in the most professional way possible. Um, See, but from my perspective, <clears throat> you know, Kyle abandoned Joe, left Joe. <laughs> Joe was like, Kyle, I need work. And, you know, Spots I got to, I got to eat and everything. And Kyle was like, fuck you, Joe. <laughs> fuck you. You Whereas you I was like, shit. Joe, I'm going to provide you a constant supply of work. And so, so I've been working with Joe for, I feel like a year and a half, two years now. It's right in that range. Good guy, Paul. Yeah, no, Joe, you've definitely been working with uh, Joe more. Joe edits one or two of my videos every week. I send him yep. the raw footage and usually an outline or something like that of kind of what I'm going for. Yep. He edits it all together. He sends me back a project file, and then I load up the project file, run back through the project. And it depends. Sometimes I'm just like, yep. I watch it, and I'm good render it out sometimes i spend another couple hours editing it myself it really depends on the project and uh whether or not joe did a good job joe is amazing Some, sometimes by the way. he sucks no joe's awesome uh, by we, the way we love joe if you're ever interested in just like you know editing or even like visual effects he does really good uh, really good uh work uh on that front um those of you who have seen the fractal design pre-roll with my grandpa as my grandpa like ra runs the car into like oh, yeah, the, that one. into the neighborhood and the car explodes that's all joe like joe does all the visual effects for pretty much anything you'd see on my the channel one, the one where kyle and josh appear in my living room with yeah, the, the with vr headsets. headsets like joe did that uh, special yeah. effects as well yeah he does a really good job so yeah, he's awesome. good job joe GG. And um, nobody else give him work because he, he's, he's ours. <laughs> We're hoarding him. <laughs> We're hoarding Joe for the next stuff. 10 years. Uh, but thank you very much, Styx. Jake. Oh, no. Uh, oh, Jake that 3D. Was Jake 3D. Next up, we Two got more. Card Doc 221. $5. Oh, yeah. And you guys are awesome. Drink a Great Lakes Edmund Fitz Fitzgerald for me next week. Edmund will Fitzgerald. Do. That sounds great. I will, the wreck uh, of the Edmonds that in mind. Fitzgerald is a song. Sounds like a distinguished gentleman. And Luke, for, 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 for once again, not Luke, for, 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 uh, $5. Also read the Foundation series to offset the Orwellianism. In, uh, in uh, reference to George Orwell? Or no. Orwell. Um, the Foundation series is by... Um, uh, ah, uh, I'm sorry. I've read part of it. I haven't read the whole thing. Foundation... It's a book series. It's one of the consummate sci-fi Isaac authors. Asimov. Isaac Asimov. Yes, Isaac Asimov. Uh, Foundation. Yeah, I've only read a couple of those books though, but I, I should get back into it. Thank you, chat. Oh my gosh, chat everywhere is like Isaac Asimov. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Asimov. So never heard of him. Does that have anything to do with sci-fi at all, <laughs> Asimov? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. It's a brain fart. That's okay. Um, I didn't know either. Okay. Thank you, Luke. Yay! Donations. I should get back into that. Let's do really quick uh, Johnson shoutouts. Johnsons. We got a couple of those. Johnson, I have four Johnsons. Johnson, First it. Johnson from Michael from Ohio got a thumbscrew t-shirt. Big thank you to you, sir. Michael and a Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott from California. Double Johnson from Scott. Hey, Scott Double Johnson got the thumbscrew shirt as well as the English pub glass. You got some glasses and a CPU cooler shirt. Thank nice. you very much, sir. And uh, you will get those together in the same box and you get a uh, shipping refund back from us. Derek from Delaware. Thank you, Derek. Derek. Uh, got a, a couple English pub glasses. Derek. Big Johnson for Derek. And finally, Zach from Missouri. Uh, thank you so much, Zach, for grabbing also an English pub glass. I'm going to sell out of those soon enough. Oh, yeah. You, you just wait. All right. And that uh, wraps it up for this. We we had two more donations. We had two more donations. The very last minute. Very last second. So we're cutting them off after these two donations. Okay. It doesn't matter. We're not rating anymore. But Sekpazzy12, Sec $5. I have a Pentium G4560, which we were just talking about, and a GTX 1060 3GB with a 430-watt power supply. So tomorrow, I'm getting an i5-7600K. Should I get a higher power supply or is the fo the 430 watt supply fine? 
you're I'm going to say you're okay. If it's a decent power supply, if it's not like some cut rate, no name brand yeah. you've never heard of, if yeah. it's 80 plus bronze Corsair, mm -hmm. you're probably just fine. Yeah. I wouldn't want to go too much beyond that GTX 1060 with that, because right. if you increase your GPU uh, power draw, you might... Especially if you're overclocking. <clears throat> yeah, only in, only when it's peaking, you might you might start right. to, to see a little bit. But with that, uh, G with that CPU and, and uh, GPU, you should be totally fine with 430 watts. Indeed. And then finally, we have Mert Dragon for five dollars. Greetings from Las Vegas. Would you guys Las ever Vegas. consider a fan meetup here in Sin City? We know we go there at least once a year, so yeah. I feel like that wouldn't be out of the question. Just usually we're there during so CES, packed. and it's so packed with everything happening all week, so yeah. that makes it more of a challenge. Maybe we could do like an old town meetup. Or, yeah. You know, we're just like I wouldn't know. be. Just chilling in Old Town or something but like I, but off I, the strip. I feel like we're getting more and more to the point where when we go places, if we're at a place, like it's more obligatory that like we should just do a fan meetup wherever we're at. Yeah. So we'll 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 do our very best to incorporate more of those when we go and do traveling. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I like fan meetups. I like being. I do too. It's it's, they're they're really cool. They the are. ones we've had have uh, have all gone really well, so that's cool. Yep. No one's killed us yet. All right, uh, guys, that's all for my half of the show. Thanks Woo! so much for watching. If you missed Kyle's half, it's linked in the description. If you want to hit the thumbs up button on your way out, please do so. If you are watching live, we're going to do a Twitch raid right now. So go over to twitch.tv slash Neptura. Neptura. N-E-P-T-U-R-A. -E Tell them that we sent you and that you're raiding them from Awesome Hardware, yep. and uh, they'll they'll be super stoked. Raid the hell um, out of their buttholes. If anybody's interested in making timestamps for us, uh, please do so. We love you guys who do that. It's really, really, really helpful for us. Someone we'll... already did timestamps for me. Jeez, that's amazing. I know. Uh, yeah, I'll pin, so I'll pin those ASAP, so cool. and then I will also post those in the uh, description and give you credit for that and for your hard work. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode, though. Uh, we'll be back again next week with an another episode of Awesome Hardware. Bye, guys. And uh, have a good day. Good have a good week. Participate in the Net Neutrality Day of Action.